If you're looking for a way to use After Effects to overlay images on a map, this video has got you covered. Internet, welcome back. It's Robert Teagarden here again with another video. If you're new here, welcome. I post content on filmmaking tips and the business of being a creative. If that's something that you're into, stick around to the end. Maybe you'll find some value and join the growing community in Teagarden land. Today, I'm going to show you a workflow that I'm currently working on, something that I just put together that I think might be valuable for you. If you're looking to put together something that looks and resembles something like this in After Effects, then this is the tutorial for you. We're going to be using Mocha AE, which is free inside of After Effects. I'm gonna show you exactly how to trace the outline that you need. We're going to be using shape layers. We're going to be creating a stroke, a fill, a dash. And we're going to be tracking it across time in the video that we've got going on here. So let's pop on into After Effects. I'll show you exactly how we're doing this. So like I said, I need to be able to take this image right here and overlay not just this outline, but the inside fill as well. And as you can see, we've got this drone shot that's coming in here and I'm going to have to be overlaying stuff in this little section right here uh, to make sure that I can track the overlay or the mat that we're gonna be putting on top of it uh, and put the appropriate graphics on top, right? This caused me a little bit of trouble to try and kind of pin the corners down and make sure that everything's rotating at the same time, but eventually I figured it out and thought it might add some value for you guys. So we're gonna do it right now in After Effects. The first step, I'm going to duplicate this layer right here. I'm going to rename it, try to keep everything organized, and I'm gonna keep the top one and say that this is for masks. Once I'm on that layer, I'm going to go into Effects, go to Boris, effects mocha and go to mocha ae now again mocha ae is uh, native inside of after effects uh, there is a pro version which for this tutorial you don't need but it's incredibly handy at putting together tracking points and mat data so masks and tracking data across time uh, my boy chris ashley hooked it up and gave me the suggestion to use mocha uh, and it came in clutch so i'm going to launch mocha here it's going to give me some stuff that i just want to click through and you can see Here's the little preview window of what we're looking at right here. And uh, as you know, we wanna go back to this thing and I need to put this overlay uh, on top of that thing across time, right? So it's gonna basically kind of be this little section right here. So the first thing I wanna do is to create a spline. Uh, and a spline is basically just an outline. And I'm gonna do a crude version of this first, trying to kind of match up what the overlay example is from the client. So I'm gonna go ahead and start clicking around town and say that this is kind of the general area that we want down here. And once I've gone back to my starting point, it creates this little spline over here. And there's a couple things that I can do before we get started. First, I just kind of want to reference what that data point is. We've got this little parking lot section here. We've got the basketball court there. It cuts through this tree line really at this house here. So I think I've got my general outline good. And then you can see these extra kind of bezier handles here that make these lines rounded. Well, for this one, I actually want them to be 90 degree corners. So I'm gonna to continue to just pull all of these corners out and make them 90 degrees and kind of realign them now that we have 90s instead of those rounded corners. Uh, so that's a good start too. Uh, and we'll kind of just make this, you see the building line right here is really kind of where, actually we can go a little bit further to the street, right? So let's use the sidewalk as our line that we're going to be capturing on either side. So I can do that there. I can pull this out to the sidewalk over here uh, and kind of keep my lines consistent. Now the thing is, is that as this kind of moves across time, as you'll see, the little spline or the outline that we created doesn't necessarily serve us because it's not being tracked across time and it's not moving in any sort of way. Now, the difference with this one is that it's kind of moving in a, this 3D panning sort of way, which causes issues in terms of how I'm sticking points. So what I wanna do is actually put down a planar view and show the planar surface. So I'm gonna click up here and show planar surface. And then I'm also going to overlay a grid. Now I'll take the grid off for just a second. These little lines right here, these corners as I'm zooming in, this is what we're going to try to overlay and line up with the four corners of the spline that we've created too. And it's gonna help us track things from a perspective standpoint. So I'm gonna overlay the mat one more time, the grid. 
And you can see I'm just dragging these corners out to the corners of the splines that we created. And that one was really good. You can kind of see how the perspective shifts or the plane shifts, I guess I should say. And we're gonna move that one over. Let me just move this real quick over into the center. So now you can see that it's actually from a planar standpoint, it's going to track things correctly. So I can turn these things off. I'm gonna go down and check in motion uh, perspective. Now, I'm actually in the classic view of Mocha AE. You might get something that looks like essentials. Um, so you go up to this little drop down right here and go to classic, and it's gonna give you a bunch of other things, parameters to help you adjust what that track looks like. So as you can see, I kind of started from the center, which is always my technique. I always get to a place where I can see the entire planar surface that I'm going to be tracking, set my points, and then track forward and backwards as I need to. Now, there's also some technique in terms of tracking forward. So as this drone shot continues to move forward, I'm watching all of my points to see what they're being pulled away from uh, and where I need them to be at the end of this track. So that's where the end of the track is right here. Let's actually go to the far end. And then from the end, I'm just gonna kind of realign where my spline points are because we've kind of added a different perspective of what this spline looks like. Okay, so things look good there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and track back to the other keyframe that we created when we first set up our planar surface. So I'm gonna go ahead and track backwards. Now, some people don't necessarily like to track backwards. It's something that makes me feel warm and fuzzy inside. And it tends to kind of lock what those splines uh, are in place. And if for some reason, as I'm continuing to do this, cause we're gonna get back to that track surface right here, you know, I'm gonna check to make sure my points are straight and everything's good. And right now they are. I'm gonna keep tracking backwards and watching my points across time. And if I see one that actually gets knocked out of place as we continue to move across this way in the shot, I'm gonna stop it. I'm gonna look right here. This has kind of gotten knocked out of frame. I wanna realign this by pulling it back over here. Pull this one there too, right? And I'm gonna go back and track to my other key point to again, secure those two spline points and the keyframes that are there. Now, this is really just gonna keep our corners and our lines perfect. So I've done that. I'm gonna go back, click to the last keyframe and I'm gonna continue to track backwards. Now I tend to have issues in spline points when corners or pieces of the shot disappear and reappear. So you see this corner of the spline right here just kind of disappears in the shot. And those are generally the areas that give us problems or when you kind of reveal a new point, right? So right here, the problem was that as we went over to this side, uh, there just wasn't enough data points that were there. But as we continue to move back over here, we see that things kind of moved again. So I'm gonna go ahead and realign this one more time just to keep everything nice and neat. I'll go ahead and track forward in time. And as you can see, it's probably moving. Actually, let's go back one more time because this corner out here needs to be a realign too, okay? And we can also kind of just pull this corner piece down to keep this line nice and straight. Let's track it forward one more time to our next keyframe. And once that's done, we can stop with this particular overlay and keep moving. Okay, so I think we've got a decent track that's looking right here. So what I'm going to do is go up to the upper left hand corner, say save this project. And now all of the data that has been tracked has been saved inside of Mocha and transferred back into After Effects. Great. So what have I now done? Uh, I've tracked my mat using Mocha AE, tracked the overlay of where those points are going to be. And the next thing we need to do is create a shape that's going to move along the track points that were created in Mocha AE. So we gotta go up here to layer, go to new shape layer. I hate these little twirl down things. I always miss it, okay? And now if you twirl these things down, you see contents is blank. There's nothing there. And we need to actually put the tracking data from Mocha AE onto a path inside of our shape layer. So in order to create a, a path, we're gonna go to our pen tool and literally click anywhere on the composition in your preview window. And now, as you can see, I have this drop down arrow for content and I need to continuously twirl down until I get to the stopwatch for path, 
Okay, I'm gonna go back up to the masks that we created here, go to Matte Data in Mocha AE inside of my effect control window, and I need to create AE masks inside of Mocha. Now what that's going to do is it's going to create pinpoints and tracking data for the mask that we created in Mocha. And now you'll go back down and see that I've created a mask path right here. Now, this is where the magic happens in terms of being able to kind of pin the mask or the shape layer that we want, the overlay that we want onto the path and the video that we've created, okay? So you can see that that mask is here inside of After Effects, it's a pink layer. I want to collect all of the data from Mask Path. So I'm gonna click on Mask Path, hit Command and C. I'm gonna go up to my shape layer, but I'm gonna go down to the stopwatch of Path, click on here, you'll see it stacks all these things together. I'm gonna Command V, put that layer over and immediately it drops in the fill layer of the mask that we are trying to create, or I guess I should say, or the solid that we are trying to create. So if you just like this viewpoint right here, I'm gonna click out of the mask, uh, your job is pretty much done and we've kind of completed this video, but I got a couple extra tweaks that I think will be helpful to you. Mainly, I wanna make our stroke line, which is A, pretty thick and B, completely solid, uh, I wanna tune this up just a little bit. Now, uh, taking a side step, you can change the fill color, go down here, and we can change the color to anything that we want. You can see it changing as we've got that going on. Right, I'm just gonna cancel because I wanna keep it all the same as what I've done before. And the same thing is true for the stroke. Now the stroke is the line that's around your shape layer. We're gonna twirl it down, go down to dashes, and we're going to add dashes into the mix, okay? Uh, we want to change our stroke width to four because that's something that makes me feel warm and fuzzy. Butt cap is going to go to round cap. Butt cap is kind of a funny way of thinking about things. And then I'm just gonna play it through and I can see that my dotted line is playing reasonably well and my mat is actually moving in real time being pinned to where I put the shape layer or where I put the mask from Mocha AE and copied it to a shape layer. Now I have to do this a couple more times. I'm gonna do it to the street and then I'm gonna pin an actual street sign to this project as well. But all you tuned into this video for was how do you create a shape layer and track a shape layer across time using Mocha AE and ladies and germs, I have to tell you that this video is done. If you liked the video and got value from it, well then like the damn video. And if you haven't already hit that subscribe button so you can stay tuned and get notified for more tea garden goodness as we continue to pile on value for you in your creative career. Once again, this is a tea garden video in the can. I can't wait to see you guys next week when who knows what we're gonna drop. Until then, peace.